high is uh, week five uh, exodus from uh, chapter 37 to through uh, 40 and Leviticus uh, chapter 1 through 24 over uh, 2019 uh, chronological Bible reading. From 35 uh, Exodus uh, is, it was actually a starting point of the construction of the tabernacle and the uh, uh, main uh, technicians who are, uh, who are working with the uh, building project is the their name on chapter 36, verse 1, uh, Bezalel and Oholia. And chapter 37, it describes uh, the, the ark, ark, and the uh, table for the bread. And the uh, lamp stand, and the uh, uh, altar for incense. So this is uh, uh, main four uh, things uh, in uh, the, the most of holy place and uh, the holy place. And verse uh, 30, uh, 24, uh, chapter 37, it says, They made the lampstand and all its accessories from one talent of pure gold. Yeah. And 37, the art of burnt offering is big. Yeah. Think about in most. Uh, Allow at least uh, uh, a cow on there. <laughs> so uh, people are, are climbing because they uh, need to put the uh, offering and on the part they need fire and burning there. We need to think about that. And the uh, uh, basin for washing and the uh, outside the <coughs> size of that uh, outside uh, uh, the uh, wall is uh, actually uh, 100 cubit is uh, near to 45.6 meter is a little bit less than uh, 150 feet uh, that's uh, south and north and the entrance is east, and other side is west. Uh, east side is a half of that uh, north and south. And chapter 38 uh, describes the uh, the high priest's uh, clothing and some uh, thing on the clothing, like a uh, breastpiece. Something like that. <laughs> and uh, verse 30 and 40, uh, 31, it says they made the plate, the sacred uh, diadem, out of pure gold and engraved on it, like an inscription on a seal, holy to the Lord. Then they fastened a blue cord to it to attach it to the turban as the Lord commanded the Moses. So uh, the, the high priest has the uh, turban and he has some uh, diadem uh, where they, uh, it, they is, is uh, near to the uh, for, forehead and he says the holy to the Lord. So the, uh, the Exodus and especially the book of uh, Leviticus, the main uh, theme is holiness. 
And chapter 40, they uh, assembled all the uh, parts of the uh, tabernacle and they finished uh, and the date we see here, chapter 40, verse se uh, 17, so the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. So, uh, what's the uh, first year? And it says the second year. So the first year is uh, the year of uh, uh, Exodus. It's uh, uh, one thousand four hundred forty-six, and the date is. Uh, in in Luna uh, calendar is uh, January 14 is the Passover, and it says the second year, uh, first month and first day is uh, one. So uh, 14 45 BC and January 1st. And they uh, finished the uh, tabernacle when we read uh, verse 33. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Yeah, they uh, finished. Everything, but still, God uh, did not allow even Moses uh, coming to there. So, uh, in this case, cloud uh, is kind of uh, protecting uh, Moses. So, he uh, could not come in there. Uh, there is the uh, very symbolic uh, meaning to us. And uh, uh, Leviticus, uh, when we uh, uh, read the uh, Exodus, the main point, uh, the main uh, place encountering uh, of God and uh, Moses is the top of the mountain Sinai. Now, when the tabernacle is finished, the encounter place of the meeting place of God and Moses is came into the tabernacle. So when we read uh, Leviticus chapter 1 and 1, uh, chapter 1 and verse 1, the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. He said, uh, so from the tent of meeting, this is the uh, <coughs> the people's uh, uh, yard, so that means this outside people could come in, and this is uh, the priests are coming there, and this is uh, holy, the most holy place. Only the uh, high priest could come in there uh, only once per year at the uh, day of uh, uh, the atonement. Uh, but we, uh, do we know that specifically what place uh, did God meet Moses? So my uh, understanding about that is from uh, uh, Exodus chapter 25, uh, verse uh, 22, when God is talking uh, about, the, uh, about the ark to Moses, he said uh, from uh, 20, uh, 21, place the cover on top of the ark and put in the ark the testimony which I will give you. There, above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony, 
I will be with you and give you all my commands to the Israelites. So, if uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, cherubim, and this is the cover, and this is uh, an empty space. This is the, uh, uh, exactly the Lord God is talking to Moses. This is uh, what I understand based upon Exodus chapter 25, uh, verse 22. And when we read uh, Leviticus, we uh, find uh, five main uh, offerings, five main offerings of the uh, Leviticus. We call it uh, five offerings. First one is a bond. Second one is uh, grain. Third is fellowship. Fourth is uh, sin. Fifth is uh, guilt. Guilt. So all the offering has price. That means when we approach to God, we need price. So burnt offering and grain offering and fellowship offering, these three are voluntary. And sin and grain uh, guilty offering is mandatory. So voluntary means it's like gifts, and mandatory is like a punishment, like penalty, something like that. So burnt offering uh, symbolizes full dedication. So we uh, burn up everything except the uh, uh, skin. Only, uh, only the uh, priests keep the uh, skins from the uh, from the animals. And when we read uh, verse fourteen, if the offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of bulls, he is to offer a dog or a young pigeon. The priest shall bring it to the altar. Uh, ring off the head and burn it on the altar. His blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. So, when we are uh, offering a cow and lamb or a sheep or a goat, it must be a uh, mayor. But the balls doesn't matter because we cannot uh, easily figure out which one is a uh, mayor or female. And this is a dedication, so everybody could do it. And everybody's dedication uh, with gifts is his maximum. And grain offering is uh, uh, offering without blood. It is uh, uh, giving to God and giving to priests. When you read uh, verse 11, every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made out of yeast, for you are not to burn any yeast or honey in an uh, offering made to the Lord by fire. So grain offering, it must have salt, 
and some uh, incense but don't have honey <laughs> and yeast so uh, we don't know the actual meaning of why some some ingredients must keep keep but some must uh, some ingredients must uh, exclude i think salt and uh, incense is more like uh, in order and look uh, look uh, uh, neat but honey and yeast is uh, uh, too much uh, like uh, place or something like that I'm not sure. And fellowship offering, uh, when we read uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 1, if someone's offering is a fellowship offering and he offers an animal from the herd, whether male or female, he is to present before the Lord an animal without defect. So fellowship offering actually In a offering, three parts are sharing. First part is God. God has a blood and fat. Uh, God uh, explains a lot about the blood, why blood is mine. You cannot uh, eat the blood. But no explain about the fat. So uh, uh, some people suggest that fat is uh, when we are burning it, fat, ma uh, fat makes a good uh, fragrance to God. I think uh, that is a good uh, reason. And a uh, priest, uh, he gets the uh, uh, breast and uh, right thigh. <laughs> Yeah. And the uh, uh, worshiper, the, the people who bring that uh, worship, uh, that, I mean the offering, he got uh, accept that. And uh, it must be uh, eaten that day. That means if I offer the, a cow, even I uh, with my uh, family members, I cannot eat all of them a day. So that means when I return to my uh, village, it's like a festival of all the people there. So when we, uh, these three uh, uh, voluntary uh, offerings, it is uh, uh, always uh, like a festival. But uh, burnt offering is a full dedication, everything is burnt up, and but a uh, grain and fellowship, the priests are, uh, uh, they are fed by this. And when we read the burnt offering or fellowship for everything, when we uh, keep hands on the uh, sacrifice, and we must kill uh, uh, by ourselves, by myself, that animal, that means uh, I became identified with that animal. So uh, the Old Testament people, all of them know how to kill the animals. <laughs> and uh, when we uh, read the chapter uh, 4 and 5 and 6, uh, uh, sin offering is from chapter 4 through 5, 16, no, no, 5, 13, and guilty offering is uh, 5, 15, uh, 14 through 6, 7. Uh, and what is the uh, main difference between sin and uh, sin offering and guilty offering? Guilty offering is we have to pay back 
or we make the loss to the other party, we must pay back uh, 120%. And then we bring a mayor uh, ram, mayor ship to the road, that is guilty of him. So uh, the sin of him, guilty of him, all of them are uh, unintentional uh, sins. But this sin of him is purely sin, but it is, uh, cannot be recovered, cannot be paid back. But the guilty of him, if we uh, pay back to God, uh, to the uh, priest, uh, to the, uh, the people, to our neighbor, with a hundred, uh, like, uh, uh, hundred twenty percent of the original amount, it is security for it. So, uh, when we read uh, chapter 4, verse uh, from 3rd, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without effect as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the, at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on his head and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting, he is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the road in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. So, uh, sin offering, so if the high rank uh, personnel uh, commits the sin, his sin affects a lot of people, so his sin is more serious, so he must go in uh, uh, with that uh, blood of the bull, and he is going to there, and he sprinkled that blood near the curtain or uh, incense, and uh, here, and uh, pour out everything here. That's what uh, chapter 4, uh, first part says. In chapter 5, it is still a sin offering, not a, a guilt offering. If a person sins again because he does not speak up when he hears a public charge to testify regarding something he has seen or learned about it, he will be held responsible. And about the uh, guilty offering, from we, we read, uh, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, verse uh, 16, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, uh, when a person commits a violation and sins uh, unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, Holy things it must pay back. So he is to bring to the Lord as a penalty a lamb from the flock, uh, one without effect and of the proper value of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel, it is a guilt offering. He must make a restitution, pay back for what he has failed to do in regard to the holy things at the fifth of the value to that and give it all to the priest who will make atonement for him with the ram as a guilt for him and he will forgive him. So, uh, when we read uh, chapter 6 verse 4, when he does sins and becomes guilty, he must return what he has stolen or taken by extortion, or what was uh, entrusted to him, or to lose the property he found, or whatever it was he uh, so falsely about, he must make restitution, pay back in full, add a fifth of the value to it, and give it 
all to the owner on the day he presents his security offering. And as a penalty, he must bring to the priest, that is, to the Lord, his security offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for him before the Lord, and he will be forgiven for any of these things he did that made him guilty. So, uh, we must uh, clearly uh, distinguish sin and guilty offering because why? If somebody say, I took, I uh, made some uh, lose to you, and I got the uh, forgiveness from God, so I don't need to pay back to you. That's wrong. That's even wrong today. So when we read the uh, last part of chapter 6, uh, any mayor in a priest's family must eat it as most holy, but any sin offering whose blood is brought into the tent of a meeting to make atonement in the holy place must not be eaten, it must be burned. So, so there are lots of regulations we must think about that. So this uh, system, uh, God and uh, Israel and the uh, priests, the, because the uh, Levites and the uh, uh, priests, they don't have uh, inheritance. So God, Israel, and priests, they don't have a, uh, they don't have inheritance. So Israelites give offering to God, and God is uh, carrying the Israelites. The priests are uh, feeding by that role of a priest. That is what we read, uh, chapter seven, verse thirty-five. This is the portion of the offerings made to the Lord by fire that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to the servant the Lord as priests. On the day they were appointed, the Lord commanded that the Israelites give this to them as their regular share for the generation to come. These then are the regulations for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, uh, the, the ordination offering, and the fellowship offering. And now, uh, this is the uh, ordination of uh, Aaron and his sons, chapter 8 and verse 30. Then Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood from the altar and sprinkled them on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. So he consecrated Aaron and his garments and his sons and their garments. Moses then said to Aaron and his sons, Cook the meat at the entrance of the tent of meeting and eat it there with the bread from the basket of ordination offerings as I commanded, saying Aaron and his sons are to eat. So we understand that this situation. And chapter 9 is the first uh, uh, ministry of Aaron and his sons. And they all finished, uh, when we read from uh, verse 22, then Aaron lifted his hands to toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, 
he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. The, the first offering, it is uh, three, three um, offerings uh, uh, come together, like uh, uh, sin offering, and burnt offering, and fellowship offering, and uh, uh, the sacrifices on here is burned the first time with the fire from God. And after that, they must uh, keep uh, this fire uh, not be uh, quenched. But when we read <laughs> chapter 10, it is strange. God is dangerous. God with dangerous when we meet Him with sins. Uh, let me read from uh, first verses, chapter 10. Aaron's sons uh, Nadab and Abihu took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So when they uh, offered incense, so the uh, the incense needs fire. Uh, the sensor, uh, this is sensor, and inside the incense uh, they need the fire, but they used uh, the unauthorized fire. We don't know what is the uh, authorized fire actually, but, but, when we read verse 2, so fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. You can take the same thing, the same fire, but this time, chapter uh, 9, yeah, he uh, consumed the sacrifice. This time, he consumed uh, the priests. They are two sons of uh, Aaron. It's dangerous when we meet God with sins. It's dangerous. So, uh, uh, verse 6 says, Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar, and Idamar, uh, do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die, and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the house of Israel, may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. And from chapter uh, 11, we read uh, the uh, animal food, animal as food, which one is clean and which one is uh, unclean. So, uh, all the uh, vegetables okay, fruits okay, and plants okay, but only animal, some are clean, some, some are unclean. And what's the uh, main uh, uh, principle here? We don't know. But uh, clean looks like neat. Look clean and feel good. And unclean is uh, looks like unclean and looks like uh, abhor and uh, we hate that. So that is uh, uh, based upon uh, clean and unclean. Uh, holy and uh, holiness, and then uh, go to God, meet to God. That's uh, that's based upon uh, their life. 
Uh, that's why God says that uh, from verse uh, 44, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any, un uh, any creature that moves about on the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. God wants to be with people. That's why He uh, chose uh, Israelites. So, because God is holy, they must be holy. And they could be together. And when we read <laughs> chapter 12, uh, clean and unclean, when uh, a woman uh, gives birth, son and uh, daughter, uh, both of them are uh, unclean, but sons are seven days and daughters are 14 days. This looks like uh, a discrimination. Uh, but I understand that uh, this is a kind of a, uh, God is following their uh, uh, culture. God is uh, lower himself under their culture. So we call it uh, accommodation. That's what I understand. And chapter 13 and 14 is kind of a, a skin disease. Uh, not the uh, uh, leprosy, uh, all of them. So it's uh, various kinds of uh, skin diseases. So for example, uh, chapter uh, 13, verse uh, 38, when a man or a woman has white spots on the skin, the priest is to examine them, and if the spots are dull white, it is a harmless rest that has broken out on the skin. That person is clean. So the main point is, it is uh, infectious or not. And chapter 14, a lot of regulation about how they uh, recovered and uh, that, that ritual. And then even uh, the mildo in the house so uh, verse uh, 24 says, chapter 14, When you enter the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your possession, and I, <laughs> the, the Lord God, I put a spreading mildew in a house in the land, the owner of the house must go and tell the priest, I have seen something that looks like mildew, mildew in my house. So this is uh, uh, still uh, clean and unclean and holy and unholy. And this is uh, also how they keep the community clean. And chapter uh, 15 is about the uh, discharge uh, causing uh, that uh, person uh, uncleanness, uh, uh, men and uh, both men and uh, women. So, uh, there are a lot of regulation, and that is still uh, keep them clean and unclean. And when we read uh, verse 31, you must keep the Israelites separate from things that make them unclean, so they will not die in their uncleanness, for defiling my dwelling place, which is among them. This is God's dwelling place. And all Israelites are encamped, uh, uh, surrounding the uh, sanctuary and the uh, tabernacle and sanctuary. If they are unclean, they unclean, they defiling the uh, God's dwelling place. This is the main idea of the uh, Leviticus. And chapter 16 uh, says about the, the day of atonement. 
the day of autumn month is the center of the Leviticus. It is the most important theme of the Leviticus. It is a lunar calendar, uh, July 10th. And there are interesting stories here uh, about the uh, scapegoat. Uh, from verse 6, Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin, offering to make atonement for himself and his household. Then he is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. The scapegoat is in Hebrew is uh, Azazel. Azazel. So, uh, what is this Azazel? We actually uh, don't know that much uh, information about that, but uh, one goat and the other one goat is same, but it 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 uh, it cast the uh, uh, cast the uh, lot. This is like a burnt offering, and this is uh, when we read uh, verse ten. But the goat chosen by lot as the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the desert as a scapegoat. So this scapegoat Azazel is uh, uh, sending to the uh, desert. So can you guess this goat is a uh, uh, could uh, uh, alive there, could be alive there, survive there, or is uh, uh, killed. I think uh, it is killed because the goat, lamb, and sheep, all them, uh, they are uh, living under the human uh, protection. So when it going, uh, going to the desert, it must be killed by uh, some uh, animals like uh, uh, wolves or lions or bears. That's why it's still a sacrifice. So it is uh, bring the sin to the far from our uh, presence in the going there. That, that's the main point. And verse uh, uh, 29, the day is uh, seven. Uh, I mean the July 10th. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you must deny yourselves and not do any work, whether uh, native born or an uh, alien living among you. So, actually, this is not July because it's not a, a same a matching to the nowadays calendar. This is uh, uh, when we read it, uh, seventh month, that's much better. And verse 17 again, uh, I picked up the main uh, verse why the uh, blood could uh, save person. And verse uh, 10, an Israelite or any alien living among them who eats any blood, I will set my face against the person who eats blood and will cut him off from his people. For the life of a creature is in the blood. <laughs> yeah. So, a creature, 
for example, uh, especially animal, uh, the life is in blood. So, life and blood same. For the life of a creature is, is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves. It could be atonement for ourselves. On the altar, it is the blood that make atonement for one's life. So, if we, blood, we, if we eat blood, we eat someone's life. Because animal's life and people's life is the same price. This is very uh, interesting and very important story of the Bible. And chapter 18, it is about uh, uh, their uh, moral, especially loss of moral about uh, uh, sexual behavior. A lot of strange uh, story there. And when we read verse 26, uh, but you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the aliens living among you must not do any of these detestable things, for all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, he will, it will vomit you, out as it vomit out the nations that were before you. So we we understand this uh, basic uh, principle. God and land and people. So people is a. Uh, uh, Good to God, land is good to people, but people is bad to, bad to God, land is vomiting them to the other side. That is what happened, the people of Canaan will be happen, so, and it is happened to the, uh, to the Israelites. When they lost the uh, northern land of Israel, uh, f uh, collapsed uh, 722 BC by the Assyria and uh, southern uh, kingdom uh, Judea, uh, 567 by the Babylonia. And chapter 19 is uh, some people say it is uh, the uh, the the uh, commentary of. Uh, the Ten Commandments. And when I read uh, one of the verses there, uh, like verse 17, 17 and 18, Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in his guilt. Do not, speak revenge, uh, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. That is a very important uh, words. And uh, chapter twenty, uh, also the list of the uh, like uh, uh, their moral law and a lot of uh, strange things there, and also the uh, uh, conclusion is from twenty six. You are to be holy to me, because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. So this, if we, this is uh, Israel, there are all the nations. So this is uh, Israelites are 
a priest. So they are, when they are holy, they became a life of holiness. They could save the nations. That's why uh, God is set apart. God is uh, God has set apart uh, the Israelites. And uh, chapter two and first part about the uh, uh, marriage uh, law about the uh, uh, priest and. Verse 4 says, He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage and so defile himself. And uh, verse, uh, text, uh, the, the chapter 22, it says, uh, uh, lots of uh, regulation about the how uh, they could eat the offering uh, and how they uh, care that. Uh, and about uh, uh, offerings and, and sacrifices. And verse uh, 27 says, When a calf or a ram or a goat is born, born, not born, born, it is to remain with his mother for seven days. From the eighth day on it, on it will be acceptable as an offering made to the Lord by fire. So, eighth day, they could be a sacrifice. And when a boy uh, was born, uh, its circumstance days, there is eighth day. So, uh, so seven days are basic uh, to, the, to the mother, uh, we understand. In chapter uh, 23, we have uh, uh, again here uh, the festivals like Sabbath and Passover and uh, uh, like like the uh, fest of the uh, first uh, First uh, uh, harvest. So actually, uh, the the basic is uh, first month fourteen is uh, Passover, and uh, seventh month first day is the uh, New Year. Then seventh month uh, tenth day is uh, uh, no. And first month and 14 after uh, 40, 45, uh, 49 days after is uh, uh, Pentecost. When we read uh, verse 16, count up 50 days up to the day after the Sabbath Sabbath and then present an offering to the new grain to Lord. So new grain. So this is a Pentecost and a new year and it's the day of atonement and seven, uh, seventh month of 14 is uh, the tabernacle, feast of tabernacles. So I read, uh, I picked again the, uh, the Day of Atonement, verse uh, 24th. Say to the Israelite, uh, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with the trumpet uh, blessed, uh, to no longer, uh, to no regular work, but present an offering made to load by fire. And uh, again, uh, in English uh, questionnaire, I picked up the uh, all, uh, about the Feast of Tabernacle. When you read uh, 
34, say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the 7th month, this is 15th day, 7th month, the Lord's fast of tabernacles begins, and it lasts for 7 days. And last uh, uh, chapter of today is uh, uh, chapter 25, and it says about uh, uh, oil and bread, uh, bread, and uh, how we we be uh, be punished uh, about the blasphemy, and from uh, verse 19 and 20. If anyone injures his neighbor, whatever he has done must be done to him, fracture for fracture. We must think about this. Fracture for fracture. I, I for I, and tooth for tooth. Do you think uh, it can be done like that, exactly, same amount? So this is, uh, I understand, if I uh, lost a tooth, uh, I cannot pay back to the same amount, I need to bring that case to the judge, and it will be restored by that uh, judge. That's what I understand. If I understand differently, please let me know. And this is my, uh, it is my finished time to today's uh, Bible reading together with you. And thank you very much.